Hey, it's Dr. Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. I'm in Virginia at my friend's house. We're gonna to go to the beach for the weekend, but I wanted to make sure to film this video because I wanted to get this information out there as quickly as possible. But real quick, if you're interested in the interface between technology and the mind, make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so that you get updates on when I put up new videos. I wanted to put out this video on some recent developments that could really affect this field in a huge way. For those of you that have been watching me for some time, uh, again, this channel is called Tech for Psych, and it's tech for the mind, so technology that could affect the mind, but in reality, right, affect maybe the entire body, the way that we uh, work and play, and this is definitely one of those technologies. Really championed by one person in particular so far, her name is Mary Lou Jepsen. Uh, she's a former Google X project lead head. She worked for Facebook with Oculus, and now she has her own private company called Open Water. And this is a talk that she gave at TED in April 2018 that really blew me away because they have this prototype of something that she's been talking about for a couple of years now. Back in 2014, she had her original TED video that blew my mind, that really opened up my mind to the possibilities of what could be coming down the road in terms of brain imaging. And that was very interesting to me because um, you know, I'm a very visual person. Um, I do videos and I enjoy looking at um, brain scans and understand how the brain works and vi uh, fractals and anything else that really visually represents our world. And what she is talking about is democratizing brain scan technology. Currently, if you wanna get a good image of the tissue of the brain, you have to use an MRI machine, magnetic resonance imaging. And these machines are massive. They take up a whole room, they cost millions of dollars. And part of that is because of these huge magnets that they have to use. The magnets set up this magnetic field, radio pulses are sent in, different tissues react to those signals differently, and they produce an image that we all know of as an MRI. Again, the problem with this machine is it's massive, it costs us a lot of money, and if you wanna do research with it, um, you know, you have to bring subjects in one at a time, scan their brains one at a time, often multiple times, using different scientific protocols, just to get a uh, you know, batch of images to use in a study. And wouldn't it be incredible if we had some kind of wearable that was able to get this information so that we could crowdsource the information feed it into some kind of uh, AI or machine learning algorithms to detect little nuances in the imaging and improve our diagnostic and treatment capabilities. Not only could you use it for things like diagnosis and treatment for mental health disorders, but you could use it for things like self-improvement and learning. So backing up a little bit, what Mary Lou Jepsen is talking about is near-infrared spectroscopy. For those of you that have been watching my channel for a little while, I'll talk about uh, innovations in mental health, self-improvement, and a lot about neurofeedback technology because I think that neurofeedback through something called operant conditioning can be the future for uh, having us learn new skills. I talk a lot about uh, these devices, these personal EEG devices like the Muse headband. Now what is the Muse headband and what does it do? So the Muse headband measures EEG, which is electroencephalography. So basically when the brain fires, it creates a voltage change below the skull, and this is thousands of neurons firing at one time. They create a, again, a voltage change that influences the electrodes in the circuit, and the device can pick that up and determine uh, what kind of brainwave frequencies your brain is firing in. And in doing that, it can guide you through a feedback loop using sound and an app that's on your phone to get you into a meditative state, okay? The thing about EEG is it's an in indirect measure, right? So the neuron fires and then it creates this voltage change and then you use that to determine how things are firing. So like imagine if you could see the actual neurons firing or at least groups of them firing or the blood flow that was associated with those changes. You could figure out with much more accuracy where in the brain they were firing, how they were firing, and get direct visual representations of what was going on. That is what they do with uh, functional MRI, and that's where a lot of uh, neuropsychiatric studies come from. Now, backing up a bit, Mary Lou Jepsen talked about initially research that was done at Washington University in St. Louis where they were using near-infrared spectroscopy to track, to first image the brain and then track blood flow changes that were happening, just like a functional MRI does. 
and she posited that this technology could be scaled down and made with more finite resolution to really create an amazing device that could be worn as a wearable and could do brain imaging. Uh, this talk that she originally did in 2014 was one of the main reasons that I decided to continue my pursuit in psychiatry, neuropsychiatry, and neuroscience because it really felt like it showed the possibilities of what our new technology could do to transform not only that field, but really any way that we really operate in society, learn, um, do self-improvement, etc. You can see her other presentations online and uh, some of them are pretty close to the one that she gave with Ted. I just wanted to go through the stages and sort of give my own thoughts about um, how we could apply this technology if she really is successful in developing it. So Chris Anderson introduces her and says, this is might be the only person in the world that could come up with something like this because of her background. She has a background in holography, some experience with neuroscience, and then uh, is an expert in the mass production of consumer electronics. So the first thing she does is take a red light and shine it through her skin. If you haven't seen before, maybe you take a flashlight or whatever, you get this red glow that comes out the back of your hand. Really what she's demonstrating is the biological tissue is translucent to the red wavelength of light. It's also translucent to things like x-rays, but x-rays can cause cancer if you expose your body too much to that. But near-infrared light is uh, you know, produced by the sun. It's around us all the time, so it's a very benign energy source. And that if we could use this energy source, the imaging would be much more benign, and we wouldn't have to use things like the giant magnets that make the MRI machine so huge. So how are we gonna use this red light? Well, she takes a chicken breast that she's inserted some kind of like object into to represent a tumor, puts another chicken breast on top of it to show that the red light actually disappears because the red light really diffracts, it spreads out, it hits that biological tissue and scatters all over the place. And what you need is a holography device to put it back together. Now holography has to do with uh, taking scattered light, putting it back together into an image. And she goes through a couple of different examples with that. You can take a look at holography on your own time. But if you have a device that can reassemble the light and put it back in the image, that, me that means you can take that scattered light and really make the image way more uh, clarified than it would if you actually like tried to use the scattered light, which would be completely useless, to be honest. So in their lab, they have this tissue that supposedly is the same um, density and thickness as brain tissue, something that represents like the human brain. And they're able to shine light through it uh, get that diffraction pattern and then put it back together through the holographic device and create a beam of light. And this was to demonstrate that yes, we could shine near-infrared light through the brain, recollect the light from all the different scattered you know, directions and create an image with it. And in the talk, she was able to describe the fact that their lab has been able to refine their techniques to get images to within the level of a neuron. So within that mock-up tissue, they were getting a resolution to within the size of a neuron. And that is massive. If they can really apply that to the brain, not only would that be an incredible amount of resolution, but that would be an incredible amount of information that we could use for everyday brain imaging. And the amazing thing about that near-infrared light is that you can just have like little electrodes admit that and have little sensors collect the light back through their holographic design and reassemble the image. And she went through somewhat of a more complicated explanation of that in the talk. Um, one of the things that they were gonna do is use ultrasound to cancel out light particles. Okay, so you have two different wavelengths of light coming in, you do sound pulses, and through that interference pattern, be able to reconstruct the image to actually see biological tissue. And they're in development of this right now. And you know, in the talk, she holds up this little band representing the actual size of what this device would look like. They could put it in a ski cap, okay? And if you can think of the amount of resolution that they're able to show with the model, if they're able to get that with the true human brain, you know, sky's the limit, that would be incredible. And there's a lot of different applications that I can think of for this technology. And the amazing thing is she told Chris Anderson that they would like to have development kits by the end of this year and potentially even start developing and selling the devices w within about two years. That would be incredible. <laughs> Mary Lou Jepsen, if you're watching this, I'm rooting for you because um, really that takes what, you know, people are trying to do with EEG 
and magnify it tenfold. So you could actually do EEG along with near infrared spectroscopy and get a ton of information. And that would really increase the resolution of any neurofeedback processes that you're trying to do. You can take a look at the strength of connections between different cortices of the brain and take a look at how you can increase those connections or even turn on parts of your brain that you hadn't been using before. I see all these different applications when it comes to self-development with this technology. Now, of course, this device is still in development and who knows how deep within the brain they would actually be able to image. I guess they won't know until they actually build the device and try to refine their techniques. But if they could actually see the connectome, at least parts of it, and the connectome is the myelin sheathing within the brain, um, if they had that type of resolution, they could take a look at the different thickness of the myelin sheaths, right? And thickness of myelin sheaths are the connections between different parts of the brain. And you can actually track the mass of that and um, show increases in learning, okay? You can teach someone a skill, measure the amount of connections between different areas of the brain, and measure how much of the, you know, the connection was actually made. And they've actually shown um, people with different skill levels actually having different sets of connections within the brain. Can you imagine if they, we had that information? You could track information of the brain and just like physical fitness, you could actually you know, train the brain to actually become more robust. And you could take a look at the different areas that were weak in the brain and develop those parts of, of the brain as well to improve things like attention, you know, have people um, be able to meditate in a deeper state to learn different skills. All these different things would really be available through a technology like this if it was with that type of resolution and could be democratized to the population. I could see like self-development kits coming with it, you know, you get these imaging technologies that could track how well your brain is functioning and you could get like these little tutorials about how to increase your skills and maybe you have some virtual and augmented reality training programs that, that teach you uh, different things and you can track your progress by using the imaging technology. And all these different things could come together for a much more robust diagnostic ability for people to diagnose people with mental illness, get them the right treatments, and see progress that come from the treatments. Um, so one that really championed this is someone that I actually just interviewed in New York. His name's Tom Insull, and he was the director of NIMH for 13 years, and really put forward the, the RDoC principle. And uh, he, in my opinion, was very brave for standing up and saying, hey, the DSM is not where we really should have it. And this was back when they were putting out a new edition. And he has since left and has, uh, you know, co-founded his own company called MindStrong, where they're taking a look at smartphone use and seeing if that can be used for sort of like a digital phenotype for diagnosing things like depression. But, you know, all these things are coming together for more information and really that's what we need. We need more objective information so that we can be more scientific. Not only again about treating and uh, diagnosing things like mental illness, but about things like learning skills and tracking different things about our brains that really increase the human potential. And this really could come to the next part of the talk that's super spooky. Um, you know, back in Mary Lou Jepsen's 2014 talk, she spoke about research that was done that showed that the um, blood activation pattern in the occipital lobe, um, you know, when you see an image, uh, it's processed mostly in the back of your head here, in the back of your brain called the occipital lobe. I remember when I was talking about how the blood changes uh, according to what areas are activated. Well, there's blood change activation patterns on a functional MRI that uh, actually encode what someone has seen. So they've replicated this. They can show people YouTube videos and take a look independently at the blood flow changes that are happening in their brain and replicate what they thought that they saw. Um, it, it's incredible research and some research actually shows that visualizing an image is the same as seeing an image in the blood flow activation pattern. So you can imagine that you could imagine different scenes, have a computer take a look at that blood flow pattern and project things that you're actually seeing in your mind on the screen. And again, this type of technology that Mary Lou Jepsen is creating could democratize that so that we have enough data to actually make that happen. We're talking about like telepathy or something. It's really bizarre. So you could actually use blood flow changes in the brain to communicate what you were visualizing as well as, you know, you could imagine someone going to sleep with this ski cap recording the blood flow changes in the occipital lobe during sleep and recording things like dreams. 
wouldn't that be amazing? You would probably have to have a repository of information for that individual um, wearing the ski cap a lot during the day to you know get the visual imagery and link that up with the blood pattern changes in their own brain. But if you had that, you could you know reproduce images like a movie of the dream that they had. And uh, you know I think that Freud and Carl Jung would be amazed to uh, see something like that. You know they'd be amazed about what's going on these days with genetic analyses, brain imaging all that kind of stuff, but this would really take it to another level. That's pretty much all I had to say today about the topic. Obviously, a lot more coming on down the pipeline. I'm gonna keep my eyes on it, and if you guys are interested in hearing updates, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell and check me out on uh, Facebook. There's a Tech for Psych Facebook page, and you can also go to my website called www.techforpsych.com. It's Dr. Cody Rawls signing off. Talk to you again soon.